welcome back. And I'm so happy to be here. Um, just a reminder, if you have questions that you want me to take on the air, so to speak, go ahead and either email them to me directly at ariel at the dcw.org, or you can send me a PM through the, um, through the discussion forums, and those are located at the dcw.999.org. And, uh, I also, people wonder why I don't do shout outs and, and things like that. This particular podcast, I don't like to to, uh, to do anything but just get right on into the lessons. Uh, this is a purely educational podcast. It's not a, um, an, at all, we don't do music or anything like that. But if you want to hear all about the other podcasts that I listen to and all that stuff, just listen to the DCW podcast. Um, you can you can find that on iTunes, Ariel's DCW Lectures, or at uh, our website, and that's at thedcw.org slash Ariel. So anyway, um, let's get right into some of these questions. Okay, Sir Lara Tan... Ooh, Sir Laratan. Well, welcome, sir. <laughs> has uh, seems like a very nice person. I'm just I'm just being kind of silly. Um, has a question. First question is: I always was drawn to magic, but every time I start to study a certain path, it always goes good for a certain week. But then it's like what drew me to that path goes away. So I try to stick with it, but I can't. It's like I lose my passion and desire for doing it. And even though I have been able to stick with your class, I worry the same will happen. Do you have any idea how I can stop that from happening? Sorry, the question was so long. Oh, that wasn't a very long question. Some some of these questions go on for pages. Um, well, there's a couple things that I might say about that. First of all, is there's nothing wrong with with um, quitting something if if you decide that that it no longer serves you. Sometimes sometimes we do need to just go from thing to thing to thing for a while uh, something that something draws us to to a certain path and um but the rest of the path is just not our cup of tea so we get what we like out of that and then we move on and there's nothing wrong with that um there's you know there's there's there, there's a definitely a validity to that however if you notice that the your issue is not so much that but that you um that you tend to be a bit of a dabbler and you never really are able to gain any mastery on any particular path. Um, I understand. Uh, you may want to look into what um, your own personal patterns are around completion. And a lot of times there's there's a um, there's a deep underlying um, issue that needs to be uncovered with the whole concept of completion. And I know I used to have that as well. Um, mine, it seems kind of funny, but um, I, I uncovered that I was I was scared of completion just because of some of the, um, there was some the stuff that went on in my childhood. And this is another reason why I love to uh, recommend that people get some kind of psychotherapy, when they, especially when they're doing magic. Um, there were some things um, that happened in my childhood that made me, feel on some level I made a decision that if I were to follow something through I would ultimately be hurt or maybe even annihilated I, I had made those decisions based on some some real deep stuff that had gone on in my childhood and I worked through that I had to really work through that and say you know convince myself that it's okay to follow through it's okay to to feel complete about something it's all right for me not to always be starting something that that it's all right for me to 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 move through the the rest of the phases of of a project besides just starting something and once I was able to do that, that took me a, several years, actually. Um, I was able to have much more success in many, many areas of my life. And magic played a huge part in that. I did, um, I did a lot of, I, I created a lot of rituals and spells around the whole concept of completion. But again, it wasn't just so much I command myself to, to, to complete projects, because that's not what needed to be done. The, it was more of a discovery as to what are my obstacles 
what it, what is it that that stands in my way of completing and those rituals were more of um, rituals of self-discovery so that when I was able to bring certain things up to the surface and say oh I get it this is one of the reasons why I'm so afraid of completing things then I was able to redefine or reframe or rescript the whole thing so that I could do it in a new way. Now, on the DCW Meditations podcast, which I have not updated in you know seventeen years, um, there is a good meditation that that is something that I have used um, that um, that that uh, that deals with just that reframing. And oh, I wish I could remember what it was called. Um, you know what? If you give me a second here, I'll look it up. Um, oh my. I hate to uh, waste all this airtime, but it is a good meditation. Uh, let's see. It's called, it's coming up. Here it is. Oh my God. It's called Resolving Inner Conflict. Oh, it's the last one. It's the, it's the most recent one. Back in, back in February, I did an actual meditation on this podcast. I have got to update that darn podcast. Um, okay, so you might want to um, to once you once you've uncovered those those issues, um, uh, you might want to try maybe try that meditation. You you might find that it that it's helpful for you. I know it was for me. All right, so here's some other quick. Thank you for for asking those. Please keep the questions coming. Everybody really benefits from from uh, this stuff, myself included. All right, this one is from uh, Thy Godlin, who's a male. Thank you for telling me that you're a male. Um, <laughs> he says you seem cheerful. Oh, thank you. I hope I do. Um, I try to be, but that's not your question, is it? I have some questions and would welcome your views if your schedule allows you to answer them. Okay, let's see. In one of your Witches Primer podcasts, you talked about a witch's... Oh, you know what? We already did this one last time. Uh, you know what? We already, we already covered this. Never mind. Okay, this was last... Uh, see, uh, sometimes my brain. Sometimes my brain. Okay, here's another one. This one is from Onawa, and he has four questions. Male. Lots of guys asking questions. Here we go, guys. Uh, Number one, I believe that tools with a personal connection should be stronger than tools with no meaning or personal connection, i.e. a wand from a tree that is meaningful to me would make a better wand for me, even though it is not one of the more traditional substances. In this case, it is an Osage orange tree, which was used by Native Americans in the Midwest to make bows and staffs, which is very uh, rare in the East where I live. Okay, that's not a question, but I agree with you. <laughs> yes, we agree. Uh, something that, that calls to you and speaks to you and has resonance with you, rather than something that a book says this is what you should have, is definitely much more powerful. We are in total agreement on that. Okay, number two uh, question. Likewise, I have a stiletto dagger that was forged by my grandfather when he was a child. It is all steel, and I hesitate to paint the handle black. I think the personal power of the item as it is might trump the black handle. Your thoughts? Okay, <clears throat> I'm not sure how well I've covered this, but let's make sure that I do this now. The traditional specifications of the tools are just starting points. They are not rules. They are not set in stone. My blade that I used for the first, I don't know, 15 years, I guess, <clears throat> of my of my craft was an antique blade that I found that it just called to me. And I had to go, I mean, it was like, uh, it's 20 miles south of where I live. I had happened to be in this shop and I said, oh, that's beautiful. And I actually left the shop without it. And I couldn't stop thinking about the darn thing for, for weeks. And I had to make another trip down there just for that blade. Luckily, they'd still had it. And um, it was uh, it was an un well it was a somewhat finished wood handle, but the, I, I wasn't going to paint it black. It was perfect the way it was. Yeah. So no, you don't have to do anything. I now have a black candle blade that I use, and I love it, but I wouldn't trade 
the experience that I had with my my old blade for anything in the world. So you, as as always, use your intuition, use your your gut, use your spirit mentor, use whatever um, you can to find out what's true for you, what's real, what's real for you. Um, much more important than than um, than some rule you read in a book or heard on a podcast. Okay, third question he has is, on the dagger, my grandfather was a very devout Catholic and probably would not approve of what I'm doing with his dagger, but I was very close to him and I keep mementos of his spirit close to me. I assume in whatever afterlife he has, those definitions don't really matter any longer. Is there a danger of using this as my athme? And I love that you use the L, like Sybil, Althame. Um, let's see. You know, I'm not going to tell you whether you should or you shouldn't use it. Again, you need to use your gut. You could even ask him or ask your spirit mentor to ask him for you. My sense is that it's going to be okay. My my, just, you know, I'm not a good trans medium, but I get a good sense that that it's all right, that you're, that you, and that you kind of know that it's all right. Um, and that it's not his dagger anymore, it's yours. So you can do what you want with it. And that's just my opinion. Um, but uh, and and that you may want you may want to make peace with whether he approves of what you're doing or not now with him before you move on with it, because um, what you're doing is good. If you're doing what we're what we're teaching on this podcast, what you're doing is very good. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. There's nothing sinful or evil about what you're doing. It's a very good. It's it's a power of, it's 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 a power for good in the world. And the more people that are doing this kind of work, the better this world is going to be. And um, you need to know that before uh, in yourself, so that you so that you don't have any kind of uh, aching inkling within you that you're doing something wrong or bad because because you're not all right and and i'm not here to convince you that what we're doing is good you need to know that that is true for yourself so you need to make peace with that anyway um, because i get a slight sense from your question that since your dad your granddad wouldn't approve of it that somehow you're not quite convinced of it yourself so uh, i could be wrong but but you want to make sure that you that you go forward with what you're doing in the craft with a sense of of um of beauty and purpose and 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 relaxation and peace enthusiasm joy and understanding that this is a very very good thing it's a very very good thing what you're doing all right and then finally what you said about light touch resonates strongly with me i tend to look at spirituality with reverence and as i try to learn a new spirituality i find myself being severe in my approach to it determined to do it justice. I'm not sure if this is a fair question, but how do you keep from being so serious about this? Did that evolve in you, or is it a sense you have always had about the craft? There's a difference between taking something seriously and making it serious business. You know, you can... Have you ever noticed a child, when they play a game, they're playing, but they're serious. It's it's serious that they 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 take their game seriously they may be playing fairy they may be playing house they may be playing fantasy games and they're having fun but they believe it they know it they they're it's you know they're they are really true to what they're doing and that's what we need to recapture is that we have to we have to be able to enjoy what we're doing have a sense of joy have a sense of play have a sense of open mindedness wonder and 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 love but it's not but we're not frivolous there's a difference between frivolity and um and joy so keeping a light touch meaning that you're not that you're not um uh severe severe severity your word is a great one the severity that you're talking about can be a killer to magic because severity and joy don't seem to to coexist peacefully in the same place with one another in my experience anyway so um so there's there is nothing there is nothing contradictory about the fact that i have a sense of play a sense of joy a, a sense of wonder and um and and and, and uh, that i love what i do um, and that I always have a, a, a try to have a, allow myself to be enthused uh, by by the the spirit that takes me when I'm working 
the craft, but that doesn't mean that I don't take it seriously because I'm very, very serious about my craft and very serious about my spirituality. But it's not, um, it's not dogma. It's not. Um, it's it, it. It doesn't squeeze the life out of me. There's no. There's 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 no lack of joy in what I'm doing. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And thank you, everybody, for those questions. Please keep them coming because um, that's how we learn. That's how I learn. That's how we all learn. Okay, today we're going to be talking about building thought forms. And we've um, sort of touched a little bit on the building of thought forms um, in a previous um, lesson when we were talking about raising power. Uh when you are able to go through that exercise of raising the power through the through the energy centers in your body, hopefully you're, you're getting adept at doing that. If not, I would go revisit that that lesson because um, it wasn't just a one-off. We're, we're coming back to it now. Um, those energy centers in your body are very important things to have mastery over if you are going to be able to direct that power powerfully. <laughs> so... What we want to do with a thought form is uh, it's it's a type of spell work. When you are doing your your spell casting, what we're doing with this is we're actually taking some of your um, psychoplasm, I think you could call it, <laughs> some of your, some of your psychic energy, and we're actually physicalizing it, and we are turning it into. Um, uh, a dense version of uh, 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 of your of your spiritual energy that you've been experiencing with the raising of energy. We are focusing and uh, focusing it into um, a physical location, a physicality, and programming it to do particular work for you. So there's a couple different uh, types of of thought forms. One is going to be the um, the quickie, where you just build a thought form and you send it on its way to do its work. And um, it's usually that you usually use that for something for something simple uh, that 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 doesn't require a lot of energy. And then there's the um, the the thought form that you that you work on daily for one to four weeks, and then you send it on its way to do its work. And then there's a, another kind of thought form, which is a permanent thought form, which um, you that you're always adding to you're always charging to, uh, charging it on a regular basis and it and you give it a place to live um, in in your home or at your altar or wherever and it's it's a much it's a it's it's like a very sophisticated um, uh, life form in a way that that you that you're charging and you're also allowing um, the the higher spiritual realms to charge so that it has more um of a of a um, freedom to come and go as it will because it's there to 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 always be there. Uh, those are those kinds of thought forms are are, are for protecting protection of your home, uh, protection of uh, uh, of your person, uh, pr- prosperity. You know, if you want a if you want a money battery, basically, and you're always you know. So anytime anytime the uh, bank balance gets low, this thought form knows. Whoops, time to go out and get some more money. Um, that kind of thing. Um, you could have a thought form like that for joy, um, um, enthusiasm, love, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so those are the three uh, types of thought forms, but they're all built in basically the same way to begin with. And as we go on, I'll give you um, in, in later lessons, I'll give you some some other ways to, to to work with and program the thought forms. But the basic thought form is pretty easy to build if you've been working with that raising of energy. Uh, first thing you want to do is is once you've once you've gone through that that process of of, of uh, raising the energy through the energy centers that we've talked about. Again, you've you've done all of the the preliminaries. You've done your grounding and centering, orb of light, right? And then when you've when you've um, gone through that that exercise where you're opening and uh, raising energy through your energy centers. Then you you're there. You're ready to do whatever you're wanting to do. And what you do then is you take your um your your palms in front of you. You relax, right? And and you start to feel the the palms are facing one another. You start to feel energy, uh, building between your palms. 
Um, it's usually about the size of a baseball up to the size of a basketball is usually the, the, the average. I mean, it can be different sizes, but it's usually spherical. Um, and then what you do once you once you feel it, uh, you play with it for a while. You, you play with the thought form for a while until you really feel like it's solid. And then once your, your, your thought form is, is uh, built, then you program it with your desire and you could have a little chant that you've uh, a quickie chant that you've that you've uh, written and if you if you rhyme it, it it tends to it tends to to program it pretty easily and this is where it's really good to be able to have your intent be visual or uh, at least have a real clear sense of what you want and while you're doing this chanting and seeing of of your desire you get the um you get the indigo light coming straight out of your third eye and and pouring into the ball of energy, the thought form. It's like a laser beam of that witch light, that 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 uh, indigo light, or you could use the Bunsen burner flame color. Comes straight from your third eye point right into the uh, thought form that's between your hands, and you program it. Once it's programmed. Uh, you are then it's it then it is your thought form and from there you can feed it with energy from any of your other energy centers that you feel are appropriate green energy from your heart center especially if it's for love or for money the red energy from the root center is usually a good one to program it with just so that it has some vitality and energy um, you could make it a rainbow thought form if you really feel like you need it. You need every um, every energy center in there, um, but you know uh, it, it doesn't need to be. You could you can do one or two or three or all of your um, uh, of the colors in in your energy centers. But try to try to if it were me, I would start off a little bit more simply. So say you wanted a thought form for. Mm, you needed a new um, cell phone. You needed a new cell phone. And that's what you wanted. You knew which kind it was. Maybe you had a picture of the cell phone that you wanted. And um, you just didn't have the cash for it. But you knew you wanted it. And you wanted it right away. You'd build the thought form. You'd, 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 um, you could even take the picture and place it on your altar so that you could you know, occasionally open your eyes to see the picture of the, the cell phone and then close your eyes as you're feeding the um, programming the, the thought form with the, the laser beam from your third eye, that indigo color. right? And once you feel like it's, it's, it's there, you, you, you might be chanting a little chant. Um, I'm not even going to come up with that chant because I don't feel like being poetic right now. But, you know, just come up with a little quickie chant, like four lines. And once that's done, then you think, hmm, what what, what do I feel like it would be a good um, a, a good extra um, thing? Well, I know I need it like now. So I'm going to go ahead and use some red for my root chakra because I want it. I want immediate results. So you're going to use that saying, you know, saying that that, that this that this is going to manifest immediately. Um, I know that it's going to cost me some money, so I'm going to put some green in from my heart center. And I know that it's all about communication. This is the reason why I want the cell phone. So I'm also going to put some blue from my throat center. See how that works? So that's all you do. Now, if you're in, if you're not in a circle, and, and you and you know it's a real quickie thing, and 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 that it's not that big of a stretch for you, then you just uh, you you tell it. Okay, thought form, for the highest good of all, I want you to go out and get me my cell phone. And you send it on its way, and it'll know what to do. Okay, if you're in a circle, obviously you wait until after you've taken the circle down, because if you try to send it on its way, if your circle is any good, it'll bounce around the circle. (laughs) So you don't want that. So once the circle's down, then you send it on its way. Okay, and you talk to it, and you talk to it just like a friend. You know, you, you and and make sure that you realize what you put into something is what you get back. So you treat it with you. You you're it's you're you're making a little piece of yourself. So you want to be filled with love, filled with joy, filled with kindness, and have fun. And you and you tr- and you talk to it like like you'd talk to uh, any trained. 
pet because it's a piece of yourself that you're saying you're sending a piece of yourself out of there uh, out into the into the world to to bring you back a result and you just you just tell it now i want you to go out get me my cell phone make sure that it's for the highest good of all make sure that you get the best price and that um that you you bring only joy and, and love in your wake and uh, um i need this by friday so go ahead out you go and you send it on its way now if you're if you're doing something for like say a new car and that's and that you need a little bit more energy then you're going to be doing this uh you're going, you're going to find a little place for this thought form to live. You can be on a table. You know, it'll it'll do what you say. It'll it'll do what you say. It's 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 a very thought forms are very very obedient creatures, especially if you if you realize that it's part of yourself that you're creating. It's part of your own mind that you're creating, and if you program it with love and joy, it will respond with love and joy. If you program it with fear and 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 commanding and 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 meanness, then that's the kind of result you'll get. What you put out is what you get back. So make sure you have a lot of fun with your thought forms and that you give it and you feed it with love and joy and that's that's what you'll get. So Every day when you start feeding this, you know, car thought form, maybe you'll feed it from your, your heart center. Maybe you, you'll, you'll feed it from your navel center. I don't know what your thing will be. I mean, you have to decide. Um, you're going you're gonna to feed it according to what you feel like the energy that is appropriate for this thought form is. And you, um, you give it a little place to live. And then you decide, well... It's time. Now go out. Maybe after, you know, seven or 14 days of programming it, now go out and get me my car. Or some people find that if they program it right, it'll go out on their own, on its own. And they don't even have to do that. It'll, it, once it knows that it's time, it'll go out and do its own thing because you've been programming it so well. See, but what you want to do is you want to become, you want to become sensitive so that you notice your thought forms. You'll know if it's there or not. You'll know if it's if it's if it's gone or if it's or if it's there. It's not um, it's it's not an intellectual process. It's a real thing. This thought form is a real real thing. Um. So and then the like I said, the third kind of thought form is a permanent thought form, and um, protection is a is a very popular one. Um, protect my protect my home or protect my office. And that's a good one to program with all of the uh, the energy centers. And it's one to do on a regular basis. You just do it every day. And it doesn't take a long time, but you just, you know, you, you have a little quickie chant that you, that, you, that you program it with every day. And you make sure that you give it a place to live somewhere in, um, somewhere in your home. And what you can do is if you're like, if you're in a circle, and you and and you let's let's say you you're in your circle and you and you and you you're programming your thought form and you see it on your altar once your circle's down you can actually pick up the the thought form and bring it somewhere and just say okay stay here stay here and um make sure that everything is safe here and that thought form won't won't will be dormant unless something happens psychically or physically now i remember once that um i was i was at a, a place where there was such a thought form and the thought form did not know me. It's sort of like a watchdog. The thought form did not know me. And, um, it was, uh, I was, um, it didn't know that I had permission to be in that, in that place. And, <laughs> and I was, it was just like, it freaked me out. You know, it was just like, <laughs> It, you know, it was like this. It came after me. I got this sense. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And I talked and I called the woman. And I said, uh, you got some kind of critter in there. <laughs> she goes, oh, my gosh, I forgot. I forgot. I've got my thought form. Um, and so she said, I'll call it off. I'll call it off. And so that's one thing you have to remember is that that if you're giving if you're giving your thought form a purpose. Um, it's not there to hurt anybody, but if you're there to, te- if you're, if it's there to protect, it's going to make sure, just like a watchdog, it's going to make sure that 
that if anybody comes into your dwelling that's not supposed to be there, that they that they need to get out. And if they're at all psychically in tune, they really want to get out. So, um, which is a good thing. But you have to remember that if you're like having somebody come over to house sit or or or, or watch your pets or something like that, that you let the thought form know. Like bring it a picture of the person or, or visualize the person or, or g- g- at least give the person's name. This person's coming over. Everything's fine. You know, <laughs> that it, it sounds funny, but it's true. It's true. You, if, if they're going to be house sitting for you or whatever or coming over to water your plants or check your mail, you don't want them to, to feel uneasy in your house. You want them to feel good. And remember, the thought form basically is dormant unless, unless there is danger if it's a protection thought form. Interesting, or a prosperity thought form. Um, you 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 keep it in a, a nice place in your home, and you let it know any time that you need to go out and uh, and get me some money. Uh, go ahead and do so. You, you, I want you to keep monitoring my um, my finances for me, and any time that we're running a little bit low, I want you to go out and get some more. It works. It really does. Or if your thought form thinks that you're doing okay, but you can tell it, yeah, but I want more money today. I want more money this year. I want to, I want to increase. So we want, we want a little bit more money this year. So you need to work a little bit harder. And so it will. It'll do it. You get really good at working with these thought forms. It's, um, it's, quite, um, it's quite a lot of fun. And when we start working with some more of the psychic development type uh, work later on in the, in the uh, primer, you'll start, if you're, if you're not super clairvoyant yet, it'll, it, it's interesting because you start seeing these thought forms and, they, they, and you realize, oh my gosh, they really are real. It's not just a, it's not just a mental exercise. They really do exist. But remember, if you have a sense of love and and uh, if your intention is pure and if you have a joyful heart and your karma is pretty clean, your thought forms are really going to be nice creatures. You have nothing to worry about. And a lot of people, when they start working with thought forms, they're afraid that they're going to, you know, that there's going to be like the Frankenstein monster and it's going to be out of control. That doesn't happen. It really doesn't happen. The only time that I've seen that kind of thing happen is when the person programmed it to be that. Because the, the, the remember, this is a part of you, and love attracts love. So try it. Play around with the thought forms. It's, uh, it's a whole new world out there when you start working with thought forms, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Well, that's about all the time I have today. Please keep the questions coming. I love talking to you, and until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.